Time for new. Lady Ada on her Grammy Award winning record. I know. New. New. Uh, all right. So this is a coming soon. It's a coming soon. So I think we'll just show the photo. Um, we have some students and teachers and parents and educators who want to have uh, like a plant kit for um, learning electronics and sensing. So this is a Circuit Playground Express kit that comes with a battery pack, a USB cable, one green alligator clip, and a stainless steel nail. And um, the Circuit Playground Express has capacitive sensing. So when you stick that nail into soil, it can detect how wet it is, which is great for doing plant moisture sensing. So, you know, we have a, we have demo code already, um, plotting, plotting code for Circuit Python. We also have some code for make code. So you can make your own reactive soil plant monitor. Um, this is great if you want to like teach kids agricultural skills or plant caring skills and also electronics at the same time. So showing you how programming isn't just about making things appear on a screen, although there's a little bit of that, but also how to make physical devices in the real world react and maybe solve problems that we all have, like forgetting to water our plants. Yeah, we'll have a plant in space back because China put some seeds on the moon and you know, we gotta, we gotta do our part. We gotta get some plants in space too. Okay. Okay. We have this fun case from PyCom. It's an IP67, it's kind of like a universal case. Um, what I like about this is it's not too big, so you can fit like a feather inside of it. You have a photo here they, they provided with a, a PyCom board, but your feather is about the same size. You can fit a battery, and what's neat about this case, which I'll show off in person on the overhead, is, well, there's a couple things going on with this thing that are pretty cool. So, um, okay, so first up, there's this gasket here, which you can kind of barely see, but there's a rubber gasket on the inner lid and brass inserts. This is a nice, nicely made case. It's a sound of quality. If you have a brass inserts, it means you can take it apart and put it back together and it won't like dissolve. Um, it's got lots of bosses for attachment points, which is nice. Uh, it's got sort of this, um, these uh, mounting hole slots here so you can attach it very easily without having to like hook it onto something. And uh, it has these pop-outs. We've popped them out already. So these are normally closed. Um, like this one, but there's one for, um, like this one is the same size as a cable gland, uh, PG7, which is like a standard size gland. So if you want to have cables that um, stick out, you would take one of these glands, and we have a guide all about glands. Um, you put this in and then you can have cables, uh, you, know, you, you, you finish the job and screw it in, but you can have cables leave and maintain that waterproofness or weatherproofness without having to worry about like, how do you fill in this hole? So cable glands are a great pairing for this. Um, there's many sized holes and slots that you can attach to. And these are like um, SMA connector size slots. So if you have antennas or you maybe want like a panel mount USB thing. So you have a couple of punch outs. So you punch these out um, with carefully with um, a tool or a knife. And then you can uh, attach a uh, um, antenna or cables and then have your electronics um, inside nice and safe. And, and while it is designed for PyCom boards, it's not only for PyCom boards. So it's good for everything, but um, they designed it for their customer base and we're like, this is pretty handy. Okay. So put it in the store. Next up. Ooh, the MLX 9393. This is a very cool sensor. So this is a wide range magnetometer. So we stock other magnetometers in the store, actually the LSM 303 and almost all of the nine off sensors we have, you know, they have pretty good magnetometers. Those magnetometers are designed for sensing the Earth's magnetic field. So they're very sensitive and they saturate quite fast. You, do, you can't measure very magnetic things because they're meant to pick up the very slight um, magnetic uh, signature that, you know, the, the direction of the North Pole so that when combined with gyroscopic and accelerometer data, you can get uh, you know, that nine degrees of freedom, which lets you do orientation sensing. But when you use a magnet next to them, they, they quickly oversaturate because a magnet is so much more powerful, like even the lowest cost earth magnet, uh, where earth magnet is more powerful than the North Pole. So those sensors usually top out at like, what, like one micro Tesla. And this goes up to like, I think like 50. So, I mean, maybe even like 0.1 micro. I mean, it's, it's, it's massive. Yeah, this is, uh, 2.5 up to 50 um, micro Teslas in range, and it has a couple different gains. So I'll show you what I mean. Um, so right now, you know, it, it does have, 
Um, it is, you know, measuring the data. Even if you can't read the text completely because it's, it's quite small. I'll try to zoom in a little bit more. So you see, it is it is able to measure. You know, I can rotate it, and it will it will measure uh, the magnetic field of Earth um, at a you know it's at some range. But what it's really good for is if you have a magnet, it can sense the magnet, and as I rotate the magnet, it can. You can see the numbers, um, especially cool. the X, changes around a lot. So what you can use this for is actually, it's used for like joysticks and um, uh, rotary encoders. So if you have something with a magnet in it, you can kind of sense where is it in relation to this um, sensor. So you, it's not good for like long range positioning, but if you're doing something with very short range positioning, if you want to detect only one item, right, because two magnets is gonna mess it up because it doesn't know the difference. But you have one item with a magnet attached to the end, you can sense where it is with respect to the sensor because it can, can measure these um, massive, um, actually this must be nano Teslas, not micro Teslas, but, um, but you can see that the scale is, is off, but um, the, the overall reaction is the same. So you're seeing it can detect where it is and as I twist this, um, it can also detect that as well because it's in all three axes. So it's a magnetometer, but not good for earth magnets. It can kind of do earth magnet detection, uh, like, you know, the earth we're on, but it's better for rare earth magnet detection um, where something is moving around in space. So different kind of magnetometer. This is one of the few magnetometers that can handle that kind of massive range. As you can see it goes from like 50 to like 50,000. It goes quite high, quite fast. Um, you need a sensor that won't saturate at those high readings. And uh, this magnetometer does it. We have code in Arduino and CircuitPython. Works over I squared C. It's quite easy to use. You just query the data and you get it back. Mm, makes it super easy to get magnet data and maybe position data into your project. Okay. And the star of the show tonight besides the community and ULA data is this 2.7 inch e ink tricolor display. And the absence of color counts as color on this. That's why they call it I know, it's like people are like, well, what, what are the three colors? Gotta end it, gotta say it, gotta end it. Because this is the internet. That's right. The three colors in question here are white, red, and black. Um, you can't mix the red and black, so you have basically three colors. Um, so between the three, though, you can do uh, black text with red highlights or red text, although the red uh, pixels are a little chunkier, it seems to me. Um, and we've got this on a breakout. So we've already got a 1.5 inch and a 2.13 inch display. This is the bigger one, 2.7. I can't recall the number of pixels. I think it's like 250 by 170 pixels, both black and red. So the thing about this ink display that's special is most ink displays you can't use within Arduino because you don't have enough memory because you have to, dis you have to buffer the entire display um, in memory because you can't write to just one section. You can't write one pixel at a time. You have to write the entire display at once, much like OLEDs. And um, if you do the math, this is, I think, like 12 kilobytes of RAM required to buffer um, both red and black pixels, which even if you have like a really nice Mac controller, 12 kilobytes of RAM is quite a bit. Um, if you have a Linux computer, yeah, it's not so bad. But if you have a microcontroller, like an, even an ESP8266 or 32 or an M4, um, it's not a trivial amount of memory. So what we did is on the back of this display, we put an SRAM chip. So it adds a little bit more to the cost. But what that means is that I can run this on a chip with only 2K of RAM. And it's even getting the display, this image, off of an SD card. So it's even using its RAM to like manage SD card stuff. It's, it, almost no memory is used for the display itself because the SRAM on the back is what buffers the display for you. So again, a little bit more cost means you don't have to waste precious microcontroller memory that is you know, very limited and you need that. Especially for ink displays, as you can see, they don't update fast. So it doesn't matter if you write to the display like super quickly. I mean, it, it does slow it down when you use an SRAM chip because you're, you know, you have to get the data from the chip and, and write it instead of directly from memory, but it's not that much slower. It's like maybe, you know, a quarter of a second slower. And with respect to the overall display refresh rate, it barely affects it. And it means you can use this with any microcontroller you like from the Atmega 328 to the M0 to the M4 to STM32, whatever you like and without having to worry about running on memory. So now we have three sizes available, and then this one, the 2.7 inch, so far the largest, but the same size as uh, you know, an Arduino. It's kind of the Arduino shaped um, sized. It's 2.7 degrees diagonal, about like, I think 2.4 by 
one or something. But okay. um, that's the new e display. Okay. Three colors, SD card, SRAM, super easy to use. Boom.